Welcome to another episode of Business Compass. Today, I have two experts in small business management who are going to support me as we engage a small business owner and discuss the challenges she's facing in her business. It's my privilege to introduce Mrs. Mona Quarte, um, a corporate finance expert, fi founder and founding director and managing partner of BVM Advisory Services, Ghana Limited. Welcome, Mona. Thank you, Charlotte. It's very good to be here. And I also have with us Mr. Frank Abbe, who is a senior manager with the KPMG at the Deal Advisory Services Unit, and is also an expert in business, accounting, taxation, and venture capital. Welcome, Frank. Thank you, Charlotte. I'm glad to, hear, to be here to contribute towards the success story of our businesses. Thank you, guys. And our very important guest today is the founder of VDF, Vivi's Dance Factory, Mrs. Vivian Boatin. Vivian, thank you for joining us. It's a privilege to have you here. Thank you. Welcome to Business Compass. Thank you for having me. We'll take a quick peek at um, what happens at Vivi's Dance Factory. Um, Vivian has a video to share with us, so let's watch the video and we'll all come back and we continue the discussion. My name is Vivian Boateng, uh, the CEO of Vivi's Dance Factory. And Vivi's Dance Factory was established in 2016. But prior to that, I was teaching dance in schools. So we've been, I've been working for eight years now, uh, but officially for four years, I would say, when Vivi's Dance Factory was established. I see children around the world doing amazing stuff, and I, I just um, it inspires me and so I decided to do this to, to, to give the Ghanaian children the, the opportunity to tap into their inner talents and to give them the opportunity to, um, to be the best that they can be and that's why uh, Vivi's Dance Factory was established. I want to see Ghanaian children thrive in, the, in, the, in, 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 in arts. You know, we have a lot of talented children out there, but we don't have um, you know, a, a hub or a creative space for them to, to tap into that talent and then nurture them to become the best in the world. And so that is the number one thing that drives me. So far on the journey, we've had a lot of testimonies. We are impacting lives in so many ways. But when, when you need you know, grants and funding and even um, sponsorships for, for performances and things like that, you don't get it. You know, people are wondering, okay, what, yeah, I mean, what's the net for us or what, or, and, and all of that. So um, for, for people to see what we do, to see the value in what we do and to be able to come on board and support us, those are the challenges that we face. Welcome back viewers and welcome back to my panel. Vivian, that's a lovely place you have there and I'm um, really, I love what you're doing. And what really touched me was that your why is clear. Why you're doing this is so clear. You want to create a place where Ghanaian children can thrive, be their best and compete at an international level. How did you get started? Can you talk us through your journey? Well, it started 
back in uh, Ukoforidia, um, I was I was very timid. I I didn't have any confidence. Um, I thought I wasn't good enough. But or in church, we, I joined um, a drama and a dance group, and that was where I discovered that mm. there was something, you know, um, I was good at. You know, anytime I'm on stage, I was confident. You came alive. I came alive, oh. you know. And so, um, in secondary school, I, 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 I did science. I was, you know, I, I thought I wanted to be, I, well, I wanted to be a doctor. Because anytime I'm in the doctor's uniform, when we are doing a drama, you know, I looked good in it. I loved caring oh. for people. And so I thought, well, I have to be a doctor. But um, after, after school, I, I didn't perform well in my elective. In my core subjects, I passed all. But mm. electives, I, it wasn't so good. So I started remedials. Um, and by then, I joined a drama group. So after, after a while, I was even more confused. I, it, it was as if I'd, I'd never, you know, I'd never been taught science in school. So my mom called me and she said, um, how is it going? And I, and I said, mom, I'm, I'm totally confused. And said, so what do you want to do? And I said, you know what? I find my passion in the arts. And she said, so go for it. Oh, wow. And that's what she's, and that was where the journey began. So I called my director, um, who was, I mean, the director for the drama group I was part of. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he helped me to choose government tree and um, literature. Okay. So I wrote, I used six months, then I, I had six months to write the remedial. So you diverted into the arts? I changed from science to arts. And within six months, I, I wrote the, um, the new course, I mean, subjects passed, and that was what got me into the School of Performing Arts, you know. Wow. So that was where the professional journey began. Started. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think you really did become a doctor. It's just a different kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. You're a doctor of souls, and yes. it's probably even more important than the body. If the, if the soul is not thriving, then the body struggles. Yes. So um, you found your path eventually. So, but you've, you've been doing this for four years now? For four years. Obviously. And based on the prior discussions we've had with you, even though you've been running it pretty well for four years, you really feel that you are the place where you should scratch and restart all over again. Yes, is, is, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Let me listen to what Mona and Frank have to say. Thank you, Charlotte. So once again, I did a quick SWOT analysis on Vivi's Dance Factory. And I, I want to s just start by once again congratulating you. I know I said that to you earlier, but congratulations, Vivian, because you have embarked on a journey which, like Charlotte said, you are a doctor for souls. And your vision, which you, you, you told us about, is about self-discovery, which you went on to. Mm -hmm. So that's just great. That is a major strength. Mm -hmm. It is a concept that is much needed for the youth and children in Ghana. Yes. Self-discovery. What do I want to do? Instead of just being labeled a lawyer, a doctor, doctor or something. But what is it in my heart that I want to do? How can mm -hmm. I contribute to society in a, in a so meaningful important. way? Yeah. So that has been great. So... Clearly, you have a great concept going, and I love that. You also have excellent virtual marketing. I saw on Instagram that you have great following, and you've made sure that you've put everything out there on social media and online so that your events are out there, you are marketing through there, you are recruiting students from there, you are showing what you do there. In fact, just going online and seeing some of your works is, is a great joy. So your strengths are many. I mm. see that you have a wide target group. You can work with babies, you can work with children, you can work with adults. So that okay. gives you a wide group to work with. In terms of weaknesses, there isn't one because the strength is all in you and the people that you have trained to mm. carry on from you. And yeah. you're starting from scratch. So we have a n nice blank board that we can discuss exactly. with you. Opportunities in the industry. Well. You can grow your clientele base, and it's there all for you. There isn't much competition in, in this space. Yeah. You also have the staff. You have almost 10 teachers who are working with you for the different dancers, yes. whether it's mm. salsa, ballet, afro. So that's great. You have uh, multiple streams of income coming in for the different types of dancers or even acrobatics. Mm. The concept is not easy to replicate, Charlotte, yes. which is one of your, your so that's a major strength. Op yeah. opportunities. It's, it's not easy to replicate. And above all, you have a perfect synergy with the existing education system. 
you yes. can work with the current schools. You could even decide that you do work in their location or at your location, but you have that big market. The threats that I see is your high staff costs. Mm. Ten teachers is not easy. But depending on how you... Um, if we grow the market, doesn't that kind of balance it out? Well, more importantly, how you construct your compensation packages. Okay. Then it can become very fruitful. Okay. So that is important. Reputation risk is one of the big items that any school which has children, teenagers, youth in there, you have to. And also for the fiscal activity. Yeah, there I has been that insurance noted down. Yeah. that covers yeah, any that. form yeah. of accidents at your site. And also, of course, all the other um, risks that you want to cover, whether it's the business risk, you know, flood, whatever insurance for your premises. I think I actually made a list of the insurances she would need to mm, have. Yeah. So maybe later on we, we would go, go over that. that. Yes. So the reputation is very important because that one usually you can't get an insurance for that. Once the word goes out there that there's a problem, mm -hmm. you lose mm. clients. Therefore, yeah. you must ensure quality control yourself this is where the business owner must take yeah. authority and ensure that her product her service is going out there the way she wants it to go and it is achieving the goal that you've set which is self-discovery so maintaining your training certification and there are many other things we'll discuss today mm -hmm. to help you to sustain your business so that no threat puts you down okay Quick yeah. word from Frank. Yeah, thank you, Vivian. And I'm glad you, you, you are being led by your passion. What you have passion for, you can never fail. So it's great. And aside that, you, you are creating a good image out there for yourself. And that comes with it, the possibility of an expansion of your business. And expanding the business means that you have to take care of a couple of administrative things. My understanding is that currently you haven't put the system in place for your finances and all those things. That's not a problem. That's even better. Now we can do it properly and do it. Yeah, fresh. you have a clean slate. Let's try and organize your information as the best as you can. And then let's cut off and now start clean. Going forward, let's think of systems that you put in place to avoid risk like maybe your revenue coming in and it's not coming through the business. So it means that you must try and put some bookkeeping system in place to make sure that every student that you recruit into the school, you have grapes over what they are paying, how much money is coming in. You have also grapes over how much you are spending on your teachers, right? Because you need to pay them well to keep the business going. And aside that, you need to also think about compensation policies that will let you retain the right caliber of teachers. because. Your business model is a bit sensitive, it's a bit personal, and therefore it thrives on keeping teachers and their students close, you also being close to them, you know, because you're transferring some self-confidence, you're helping people to build themselves in, and therefore you need to keep a good base for your teachers, right? And you need to find a way of compensating them, let them feel part of it, of the business, and it could be in a form of bonuses, schemes, and things like that. Another critical thing you need to look at, I can see you are expanding. You have three studios, you have 500 students, and all those things. That expansion might come with it with the need for some other parties to come into the business. So you need to put your business, your records in place so that if anybody is coming in, we'll be able to determine how much your business is worth before that person came in. Yeah. And then when they are bringing the resources in, you know exactly what you're going to invest it in and how much is going to come out of that investment, that additional investment. So it's critical that we organize you properly and put systems in place. Once you have good systems, you can go back and focus on your passion and store systems will work and let your business grow. So from a finance perspective, yeah. That's, that's a really, really good opening, Vivian. Yeah. I think you're seeing some... You're getting... To you're getting the sense of which way you should be going already. Yes. Okay, so we've, we've, in talking to Vivian, I think Vivian is a classical example of somebody who is trying to turn her passion into profit. And for us to do that, to support her, we need to show her how to do it in a manner that is simple, in a manner that is efficient, and also in a manner that ensures that the business is sustainable. So that she's not just driven by passion, 
but the profit should also be there to support the passion. Um, we've talked about um, the kind of numbers you should be looking at, issues you should be looking at, such as compensation of staff. We're going to take a break. When we come back, a few things that we're, we're, I think we should be also be focusing on. We're going to look at your legal structure. How are you structured legally? Or how should you be structured legally going forward? I think we should also look at pricing for your services. How do you determine what you charge and how we can factor that into the overall financial management of your business? And then we should also look at making sure that you have a proper foundation before we embark on this expansion and this growth. If the foundation is not right um, and you grow the business, it would crumble. So we'll take a quick break and when we come back, these are the issues we'll be talking about. Welcome back to Business Compass. Today we're engaging with the founder of Vivi's Dance Factory and we're studying her business. We're learning about the dance industry and it's my privilege to have Mona and Frank to support me in this journey today. So Vivi, tell us, how are you structured legally? Are you registered? Okay, um, legal structure meaning like... How are you registered? Are you on in terms of have you been to Registrar Generals? Have you registered yes. Vivi's Dance Factory? Yes, please. Okay, how is it registered? As sole proprietary. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a sole proprietor. That is what they call an um, entrepreneur <laughs> 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 business, <laughs> business name in... in, in um, uh, the, the chart, okay, let's look. There are benefits to being a sole proprietorship, but there are also disadvantages. So we need you to understand what that means. When you are a sole proprietorship, it's basically that you register the name Vivi's Dance Factory as a business name. Mm. There is no difference between Vivi's Dance Factory and you. Okay. So it is an easy way to register a business. It is not expensive to register. You only need to give the name of the business. You need to give what the business is going to be doing, in your case, providing dance mm -hmm. tutoring and all that and then you give your place of business and then you get your TIN number, that's your tax identification number and you're registered. But the key legal thing is that there is no difference between Vivi's Dance Factory and yourself. Let me explain that to you. If you had registered it as a limited liability company, so it would be Vivi's Dance Factory Limited, it means that that entity is separate from you. If I was suing that entity I can only sue Vivi's Dance Factory Limited. And in terms of damages, I'm only, I'm restricted to what Vivi's Dance Factory Limited can pay. Now you are registered as a sole proprietorship. What that means is that if I'm suing Vivi's Dance Factory, I'm suing you. So I can sue you for everything you have. So in the kind of business you are doing, that also carries some disadvantages to you. So if I came into your place and in the course of dancing I fell and I injured myself, I could sue you. Occupies liability, it happened on your premises and you would be responsible. Meaning I could sue you and I could attach any of your assets, whether it is your car or your house or whatever. That's the kind of liability you are carrying. If um, one of your teachers abused a child in the course of the, the, the teaching, the child's parents could sue you and you'll be carrying that liability. Now the way you can manage that liability is what Mona hinted at earlier, is by insurance. So you can take certain insurances to protect yourself from the business risk that you're carrying as a sole proprietor. Otherwise, you may have to consider 
registering as a limited liability company. Mm -hmm. But if that is true, you don't want to take that step immediately, then you seriously should consider insurance. You'd be looking at general liability insurance. You may be looking at professional liability because you're offering professional services, your dance suitors. Um, you may be looking at um, occupiers liability for people who get damaged on your premises. You may be looking at um, health insurance for your your staff. You may be looking at um, workmen's compensation insurance if one of them got damaged mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. they were working. Business interruption insurance to pr protect you against crises like we just saw or what we are in COVID, mm -hmm. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You can also look at key man life insurance and that is because you are the key person in your business. So if anything happened to you, then your family can rely on that as a way of looking at, you know, sustaining the income they would have received from Vivis Dance Factory. So just the key thing to bear in mind is that insurance is a way of managing the risk and you are carrying significant risk operating as a sole proprietor in the, in the area that you're in. And in terms of cost of insurance, I'm sure you can shop around and there'll be a lot of options. Um, if there are any insurance companies watching, this is your opportunity. You can make a pitch to, to Vivi. But now let's move on to the other thing. So other than the key, uh, the, the legal structure issues, and of course, like I'm sure it will come up, the panel will tell you that if you're operating as a sole proprietor, some of the challenges you're having is because everything is dependent on you. Having a board of advisors to guide you, give you informal advice, offer expertise in the areas that you think you need may also be another solution that you need to look at. But since we have two finance gurus here, I want to bring the discussion back to the financial areas. So how do you price for your services? I've been an entrepreneur and that's always been a big issue for me, pricing for services. How do you, how do you, how do you set your pricing? Well, for the children coming to the school, we, we, uh, we charge per term. How do you decide what to charge? Because what you're charging, mm -hmm. but that's your revenue, yeah? yeah? By the time we deduct the cost of offering that service, then the difference should be your profit, that margin. So how do you know that you're making a profit? I've never looked at it. <laughs> You've never? <laughs> so how do you decide on what the pricing? Well, when, when we... Um, we we got we had or we rented a, a, a studio space. That was when okay we started we had we started factoring in um, the 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 cost of the rent like the the space and then the utilities yeah and how much we're paying staff. So you have rent, you have utilities, yeah. you have staff costs. Yes. So we we you have admin overhead. Admin. All of all of so now we calculated uh, well, all of that okay. to, to, to be able to know that okay. Okay, so, so do you know for instance whether your break even point is when you have fifty students, students or hundred students? Yes, so we did some something like that. So we know that okay, in the class I mean when um, we should have at least five students in one class um, for the class to, ha to to happen, you know. So if a class is not up to five students, that class okay. wouldn't hold. Uh -huh. So those were the few things that we... I think we need help here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I mean, um, it's, it's a classical business thing that we see common in Ghana and also people who jump into business for the passion of it. And as you begin to expand, you need to put some costing processes in place. Be able to know the cost of your studio accommodation per head mm -hmm. the, for each student, the mm. cost of your teacher, your teachers or instructors should be spread on, on, the, on the number of students you have. Okay, your cost of other administrative overhead should be spread. So you know that if I pick a student in, these are the costs that comes with it, and therefore I must charge this to be able to make a certain amount of profit. So that kind of analysis, as you are keeping your books together, We'll be able to track your cost and be able to help you know the key drivers of your cost, the key elements of your cost, and how to 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 manage it. So, where does she get that kind of support? Because so this I is not an easy exercise so for anyone. And you need to find somebody who has an accounting knowledge to structure your basic bookkeeping thing for you. And then, once you we be able to 
know how much you've paid. I'm sure you have some information from your bank statement. It may not be accurate because of the way you are starting up, but your bank statement is your first source. At least they will be able to tell you how much money is went Frank, out. Frank, hold up. Just not to interrupt yeah. you, but I think it's important to make the point to Vivian and to the viewers because yeah. in my time in banking, that was also something I saw that a lot of small businesses did not do. All your earnings should pass through your bank account. All your earnings, no matter how urgent the expenditure is. Yes, you need to buy a glass, you need to buy a pencil, you need to buy chalk. Let it go through the bank account first and then you withdraw it. Because that way it is easier for you to look back and track your expenditure. And it's also impo um, anyone who is coming to invest or, or even review, or audit. review, audit your accounts, bankers need it. Everyone can see what your cash flow is and how what the expenditure pattern is. So. Mm -hmm before you, from what Frank is saying, for you to do this kind of costing exercise, all your earnings need to go through the bank account. Okay, great. So your bank account will have some spending that you've, you've done and things like that. Because probably you are commingling that with your personal expenses, mm -hmm. you need to get that data and be able to trace what you spend that money from. Then you also look at, go to your studio and say, look around, what is this? I paid for it. Do I have an idea how much I paid for? Make that inventory listing of the things mm. you have. All the yeah, assets. All the assets you have there. Make an inventory listing of those and then get the cost to it. If you don't have a cost, you don't remember, try and ask how much is costing on the market now. Okay. You use that as a proxy so that once we're able to know everything you own today, okay, mm. then we'll say when you were starting the business, how did you finance it? Somebody gave you a loan, you use your savings, your financing sources. Let's compare that money you started with, with this list of assets that you have and the people you owe. Mm. Okay, and when we compare that, we'll be able to have an idea whether you've made profit during this period. So that's the way we, we, we do incomplete records. So take an inventory at a particular day of everything you have and compare whoever you owe do that unless as a starting point then going forward we need to keep some books for you so that's your starting point and then any money that goes in let's go through the bank and things like that and let's start reconstructing your records let me talk a little also bit about this being a sole proprietor okay so we're saying that you are practically the business okay if you are a sole proprietor and the business goes down, they can come and sell your assets to pay off and until you go bankrupt and things like that. <laughs> so uh, it's a risky thing assets to do for a business that's your husband growing. and children, so you can sell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a risky, it's a risky thing to do, okay? But let's, and aside that, every profit that you have made through the business becomes like your income. Mm. And to the extent whether you have even used the money or not, or reinvested it in a business or not, tax. it's taxable to you. And in Ghana, the high income tax bracket for individuals is around 30%. Mm -hmm. But if you were a corporation, you would have paid 25% until you pay yourself a salary or you take dividend, then, then you pay that tax. So mm -hmm. being a corporate gives you some tax deferral opportunities mm -hmm. until you use the money for personal gain. You don't pay the extra 5% of the so there are benefits to there incorporating. Are, there are key financial benefits okay. to, mm -hmm. to incorporating. And then as you grow and people want to invest in you, they, most investors don't prefer investing in super proprietors. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely essential that you, if you're going to grow and looking at the trajectory that you're on, you're on a growth path. So it's absolutely essential that you look at your legal structure again and consider after you've cleaned up all these things transfer the assets into the entity okay and that becomes your shareholding that becomes yeah. your equity in the the new structure yeah mm -hmm. and then you, you you move on the asset transfer has some complex tax implications i wouldn't worry myself <laughs> with it at this point yeah then aside that once you do your business then please make sure that your records are up to date and you are paying your taxes well you are paying teachers mm -hmm. yes you have to be paying your PAYE and all those things. SNIT. SNIT and all those things have to be paid. You know? So if you don't keep the records and things like that, the tax authorities, 
usually when they come, they will just, you know the assessment I just did, how much did you start with, how much do you have mm -hmm. now, the difference is a profit, they use that approach and tax you. Mm -hmm. And in Ghana, when they tax you, before you can even talk to negotiate your tax, <laughs> you, you need pay. to pay about half of it. Indeed. You know, so take care of your tax responsibilities properly going forward. Mm -hmm. Every expenses must be supported and things like that. Then you can plan well with your taxes going forward. And then as you grow, your business will become formalized and will be attractive to, to investors. Okay. Mona, yes. before, before you get into the big corporate finance issue, I just mm -hmm. had one question on behalf of VDF. Yes. In an era of Momo transactions, mm -hmm. how does a small business person who receives payments through Momo mm -hmm. How do they incorporate that into their business structure? Okay, so that is easy. So Charlotte, as you said, this is an age of digitization mm -hmm. and um, Momo makes it easy for clients to pay you. Sometimes makes mm -hmm. it easy for clients to pay you. The end result is that whatever is sent to you by Momo can be turned into cash. Okay. And that cash can be paid into your bank account. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you use certain platforms, and I don't want to advertise names, but we there are certain platforms <laughs> exactly, there are certain platforms that will receive the money straight into your bank account. Okay. But in the event that it is just an MTN on a Tigo or so forth, it will be uh, an amount that you can then realize as cash and pay into your bank account. Because like Frank has said, it's very important that we can track your revenue. Very, very important because that is what you live off. So it's important that that revenue. So in this age of digitization, you can still cash your funds and take it mm -hmm. and place it into your bank account. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what else do you think she should be looking so, at? So, yes. So, Vivi, you, you are in a very unique position where um, you, you have, like I said earlier, a large clientele. And therefore, revenue should not be a problem. Going forward... As Charlotte has started to indicate, find easy ways for your clients to make payments to you. In the universities today, if you go to buy a form, you don't need to pay cash. Mm -hmm. You can go online, buy a form, or fill up the form online. You should also look at doing some of those. I see that you have a strong presence online. Mm -hmm. Introduce uh, getting new clients on online, filling forms. Show them your bank account details at the bottom where they can make a payment to or if it's Momo, all the different payment um, avenues. Show it to them listed there and they can make payments to you that way. So you are tracking your revenue through your bank accounts. Again, your expenditure. Every expenditure you make should just be recorded as status. With time, you must get an administrator who will separate your operating expenses from your capital expenses. Frank talked about you having a fixed asset register so that you know what you own and what you don't. Many of the studios that you're using now are rented, so you don't own them, which is fine. But let us say you put security cameras in. Those cameras are owned by you, so those can go on a fixed asset register. If you installed bars for students to hold on to and so forth, again, those would become um, assets that you would put on your register. So you would differentiate your operating expenses from your capital expenditure. Soon you may build your own studio. That will become an asset for you. Once you do that, you will figure out what your margins are. Now, if you looked at a model of what a school like that would cost, it would help you with something that Charlotte raised, pricing. Mm -hmm. How do you price your services? There is the idea that you can go into the market and see what other people are pricing their services similar to yours or you could decide that I have a unique service that I'm offering this is how I want to price it I'll look at my fixed costs I'll look at my operating costs, and I'll look at what kind of margin I want to put on it which is affordable to the uh, clientele community okay so then you would be able to price and I see that you have different services that you offer it's not only ballet it's hip-hop it's afro dance it's afro beat and and so forth so each one may have some price differentiation depending on how much training goes into it I can imagine that a classical ballet teacher would cost differently from an afro beat teacher and so forth so you know the differentiations have an administrator sit with you 
explain your business concept to the administrator so that they can price these streams of businesses for you that same administrator will help you to be able to keep a simple log of inflow and outflow which is revenue and expenditure and how you you break that down mm -hmm. now anything that you invest in that business goes into shareholder equity and you need to list that as well don't assume that because VDF is Vivian Boating it's one and the same as Frank said you could have some serious tax repercussions so please make sure that you are separating the business from Vivian Boating in your mind and in your books I believe that what Charlotte advised you about turning the sole proprietorship into a limited liability company is going to be critical going forward because you are now more than one dance studio. You are now four, actually. Last week, mm. you opened your cantonment studio. Congratulations for that. Congratulations. You have picked <laughs> such ideal locations. I'm so proud of you. Locations that bring in the target group that you're looking at, both the middle class, the high class, and even some low-income people who have a passion for dancing. And I note that you've worked with some communities to bring some of those folks in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it brings a, a nice melting pot of all of Ghana, as it were, or all of Accra for now, mm -hmm. into one pot where they can go into self-discovery. I like it when Charlotte says you're now a doctor of souls. Yes. So yeah. you have achieved your goal. Therefore, um, administration, look, in, in terms of your teachers, the HR aspect of it, the mm. human resource aspect of it, how you pay them, whether it's a base plus a commission mm. and so forth, who gets what, that needs to be sorted out. You don't need to do it by yourself. You need to get an HR expert to sit down with you and show you what to do. And you must have a checklist so that you can ensure that check, 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 I've followed the rules. I've done these things mm. that I must do. Okay, I was I pleasantly surprised to see that you have taken the COVID situation very seriously. And all your studios are well cleaned, sprayed, and all that. And I congratulate you on that. All those are costs you need to look at. Okay. Yeah. And we talked about salaries for your teachers and some of the statutory payments that go to SNIT. I think and we so need forth. to have a whole discussion so around the statutory yes, payments. Yes. You mm. will need experts in each field to discuss with you each part so that your business can have a complete wholesome approach and you do well with that business you are poised to do well we need to go on a break but um <laughs> I, I'm, I'm feeling Vivian are you feeling overwhelmed I <laughs> I'm trying to you know it's like, I think it's a lot it's to like absorb it, and absorb it doesn't everything. it helps but it doesn't help when you have two financial days <laughs> and they're throwing operating expenses capital expenses fixed costs operating costs <laughs> and Shallow, the key for what we are telling is that she needs help yes yeah, needs I'm getting to that but don't feel overwhelmed at all you see running a business is 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 not easy mm -hmm. But it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. That's right. So pace yourself, take your time, absorb all the advice, and then we would see how we can logically roll them out. I think when we come back from the break, we will look at the simple things we think you should do immediately. What are the simple books you should start keeping? What are the numbers you should be tracking on a weekly basis? Let's try and break it down for you and make it easier so that um, we don't have you feeling all overwhelmed and like we're throwing all this stuff at you. But trust me, if you make the sacrifice and you do the hard work of sorting out your structures now, that's it. Mm. That's it. You are good to go. And there's nothing to stop your growth. So we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we would help Vivian break down all these things into little biteable pieces.
Welcome back viewers. We've been engaging on Business Compass with Vivi's Dance Factory and it's been a privilege to have Vivian Boating here to talk about her journey as an entrepreneur and I have Mona and Frank who are helping me work with Vivian to make Vivi's Dance Factory bigger and better. So, so far we've talked about your current legal status and the risk you're carrying and how to mitigate those risks. We've talked about a possible transition into an incorporated company so that we can better manage the separation of yourself from the business. Mm -hmm. We've also talked about some challenges you're having with financial management and putting your records together as, a, as, as, as an entrepreneur. And we've looked at how you started and how to turn that passion into profit. And we, we, we truly love the fact that you want to make Ghanaian children thrive. But today we want to make you thrive, Vivian. Mm -hmm. So how can we make Vivian thrive? We need to make this, the business management side simpler for you mm -hmm. so that you can truly focus on what you want to do, which is to dance to be on stage where you come alive and to give as many children the opportunity to come on stage and be alive and be the best version of themselves. It's, it's, it's phenomenal that you now have four dance studios. And so now we also need to look at how are you going to manage the business out of four locations? What, what checks and balances, what control systems can we put in place for you so that you are not losing revenue in those four locations because you cannot be in four places at the same time and then how do we make the head office structure now for you where you're working from how do we simplify the management processes there how do we track your revenue and how do we better track your expenses so i would really want frank and mona to come in and speak to us about a very simple way of managing your books where can we get support for her that is not too expensive, that would grow with her, and that makes it easy for her to track it. But you, you must commit that at least, even if it is every Sunday evening, you're going to sit down and spend some time on your numbers. You need to track your numbers. And it's not just you have 500 students this week and it's moved to 600. How are you tracking your revenue? How are payments being made? How are you ensuring that the payments that are being made by parents come to you and some teacher is not walking home with it for the weekend? Help us. So, uh, let, let's start with this. So it's baby steps. However, you've already grown. As Charlotte said, you have four businesses. I think a step one is that first and foremost, it's about the students, knowing the number of students you have. First and foremost, you can at get every location. At every location, you can get um, a, a national service personnel or one of the students at the University of Ghana, where you are currently teaching, who has some free time to get a group, maybe two or three of them. Go to all the locations and write down in a book the names of every student who attends school there. It may take them a week because in a week at least one student would have come for a class. Mm -hmm. So if they are there for a whole week, they should be able to give you the name of every student. Contact details for parents as yes. well? Yes. And with that, you can check your books because by all means they registered. They filled forms and came in and see who the parents are, phone numbers. And I think I spoke to you about this. There's going to come a time when you as principal are going to take charge and reach out to some of these parents and adults who've signed up. So you will call them. It's like a fiscal, fiscal um, audit, mm -hmm. as we call it, an inventory audit. Mm -hmm. You are calling and making contact with them. And you say, how are you? Using how that, the last class? But yes, they don't know that. Using that to reach out and say, oh, but it's your way of verifying that indeed they okay. are still in your school and they come for classes. So with that, you will know the number of students. Once you know the number of students, you already know the number of teachers that you have on your payroll. You know the student and you know the course they are doing. So you lay all that out and you know what prices you are charging for mm -hmm. each one. With that right away, you know at the end of the month what, what you, you should, should expect. expect to get. 
this is just revenue. We are not talking about profits, what you should expect to get. You also know what your staff cost is. Then you go into another Rent. section of renting. How much are you paying for rental at each location? If you are paying any utilities, find out what you are paying for that. And any other consumables, toilet paper, napkins, and all Hand those sanitizer, kind of things, all the sanitizer business, <laughs> Everything that is operate consumables all the time is going. So you write all that down. With that, now that you have all your little pieces together, mm -hmm. you don't have all your expenditure, meaning um, statutory payments to SIC and, and tax all that, and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. But once you have these basics, you can now get an administrator. And I believe you have an administrator in house. Sit with the administrator. Charlotte, I think the key for all business owners is that those who work for you must know that you understand the, the business. business yeah. And Very you know yeah. you are on top of what is going on. Yeah. It is when there is a disconnect there that games start to be played. But once you show that you know or you want to know and you are f tracking that, then they also step up and give you the correct information. So your key performance indicators now to them will be, I want to know how many students are being recruited going forward. I want and a I want report to report on this. Yes, a report on that. I want to know how teachers are also even bringing in students. You can take it further from the simple thing I just discussed with you. But I believe that those are your first steps. Great Revenue, point, yeah. expenditure, where you separate your um, recurring costs from the cost that you have like and the then I think you should so also so have a way of tracking what is being paid every week what is coming in when they know you're tracking that then it's difficult for people to play tricks if you wait until the end of the month or the end of the term and you start looking who has paid they don't even know which parents are being recalcitrant exactly. you need to know who is paying what every week and be getting those reports from them but what Mona has said is a fantastic starting point for you starting. that's not too difficult is it that's very doable. Yes. Yeah, Frank. Yeah. So I mean, like Mona mentioned, you get somebody you can afford. You're on University of Ghana campus. You can get somebody to go off at me to start your bookkeeping systems. Start with basic things like just an Excel that is tracking your student enrollment, their the fees they've paid, when they paid it, and make sure that at the end of that month, that person will go and look through your bank account and make sure whatever has been paid is in bank. They will do a reconciliation for you, okay, for each studio that Hold you up. have. What, let's, let's break down what a reconciliation is. Okay. So the reconciliation just is saying, the bank says I have 100 in my bank account. My records at the studios, all of them together says I have 50. What is causing the difference? Mm. So at any point in time, you know what is causing the difference between what is in your books and what is at the bank, right? And then once they do that regularly, if there anything has gone wrong, some, some deposit hasn't gone through, yeah, you, you can, can easily it. pick it up and follow up. Mm. And once you start following up things like that, you realize that your staff will know that, oh, you're on top of the business. No, and banks do make mistakes as well. Banks make mistakes as well. Sometimes, Sometimes they, checks get back. Yeah. Get they, back. Drop they don't the go yeah. through. Yeah. 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 And so you are on top of, of, of the business mm -hmm. going forward, right? Those people can also help you with things like the payroll for your, your staff, your teachers, and all those things, mm -hmm. so that they will know how much you're supposed to pay to tax authorities, how much you're supposed to pay to SNET, SNET and all those things. So those uh, students could help you do all those basic bookkeeping things. Then maybe at the end of the year, but this person should people should give you a monthly report. So every month you should know how much you have earned in revenue, how much you've paid out, how much profit is left. Mm. It lets you be organized to know that, oh, my business is profitable or it's not profitable. Oh, we need to increase our student drive because we are spending more than we are bringing in. Yeah. You know, so it's a tool to control your business growth mm. and development. And once you do that continuously every month and you have a complete mm. record, at the end of a year, you find an auditor who will come and look at it and audit and give you a clean report. What that does is, in future, as you grow, you can prove to any investor that, oh, over the past three years, this is how we are growing. Mm -hmm. If you want to come in, this is the worth of my business. If you are coming in but with may this... May I also add, I think for a lot of um, entrepreneurs, because that separation of self from business is so difficult, 
you also end up taking a lot of money out of your pocket directly and funding expenses and is not always captured. So this also is a good way of making sure that all your contributions are captured properly. Yes, you get it. And then you yourself, if you take money from the business, put yourself on payroll. So you yeah, also are you on a paid. salary? <laughs> you also yes. are paid out of the be. business. So you're paying other people. How are you paying yourself? I, I <laughs> so how do we know that you're making profit if you're not even paying yourself? Okay, so that is an unknown at this point. Mm. And one of the important things we just mentioned, that the principal needs to take charge. The buck stops with you. Yeah. Vivian, going forward, this is your baby. You are going to need to get in touch, as we said, with clients, whether it's parents or students directly, you are going to do that. And you can do that every month or every quarter. You also need to get, stay in touch with your teachers. You must have weekly meetings with all your teachers. You must know what each teacher is doing. What are the challenges they are facing? How can they do better? What can you do to improve things for them? With the parents, they will also let you know, my child is not happy or my child is happy. You talk about self-discovery. How are we making progress with that? The parents will also tell you what they've paid and what they haven't paid. The adults who come for class will also give you feedback. This feedback is going to be important because one of your important KPIs as a service provider is productivity. Are you yeah. being productive? Are you achieving the goal that you've set out there? So that will tell you whether in terms of productivity you are improving. Mm -hmm. So over and above the bookkeeping, once you do this personal review on a timely basis all the time, you can verify and make sure things are going right. And eventually you can have a company that, as Frank said, you will be able to give part of it to someone else for more money to further grow the company. Vivian, I think for me, Vivi's Dance Factory is a business. Mm. It is a business. You have a very lofty goal and it's, it's beautiful, but it is still a business. And in that business, you need to manage staff, you need to manage customers, but you also need to manage yourself. And so put yourself on a salary. What that does for you is that it shows every month you also have something to look forward to. But it also reminds you that it is a business. And it also means that when you have a personal need, you don't just go dip in and take out. That separation of self from business is crucial. Mm -hmm. And we've discussed simple, simple ways you can start keeping the books today. I think it's going to take time commitment. And I know that is difficult because you are juggling a full-time job. You are juggling duties as a wife, as a mother, and as a business owner, but it has to be done. And trust me, if you can make the sacrifice to do this between now and year end, we wouldn't be having this discussion next year. You'll be in a much stronger place. Charlotte, in fact, for Vivian, the good mm. news is that if you have a group of independent advisors mm. who you are not paying anything to, they are totally independent, they, they can, can give you, you advice on yeah. a lot of these things yes, that may feel more. overwhelming yeah. at this point. Yeah. They will help you with it. They will talk you through it. Frank talked about an Excel spreadsheet that you can keep yourself. We will help you to do all that. Many people can help you to put that together. This way you can grow on a sustainable basis. Otherwise, you may grow too quickly and, and all of a share. sudden you find out that, oh my God, the business is moving too fast. As to from four locations to ten it. locations, that's even yes. more difficult. To so do you need to sort of slow down, decide what your business model is and slowly set up to support it. And I think Frank mentioned this earlier. If you have a good system in place, at a certain point, you can kick back and you will just be enjoying the stream of income that comes to you. Well, how do you see, how do you see the, the, the journey going forward after all this we've thrown at you today? How do you feel? I mean, I feel great. I feel enlightened. I am more confident that okay. I, um, now I can take more control, you know, and, and put like re-strategize everything and put things in the right place so that we can go. I think I, the, the foundation now is, is the most important and that's what you, you are all giving me right yeah. now. So, so that to I help think me. our message we, to we you. We are confirming that you have a good business yes. and it's for you to make it become uh, a very profitable one. And we want you to focus. <laughs> focus <laughs> on the structures. Focus on the foundation.
If you get that right, everything else explodes. Focus. Your visual reminder every day. You wake up, think, I need to focus on this business. I need to focus on the business side of it. Not just the dance routines. I know that's what, that, that's what, <laughs> <laughs> but you need to focus on, because if you don't focus on these numbers, you won't be able to give us the dance routines that we're looking forward to and you're looking forward to. Yeah. So we'll take a break and go for the coach's corner, listen to the coach, and when we come back, we'll try and wrap this up with Vivian. Hello, welcome to Coach's Corner on the Business Compass. I am Coach Bell. Today's tip is on your why. Why did you start a business? Was it a passion? Was it a solution to a problem? Did you identify a gap in the market? Was it to make money? Why are you still in business? Why is it growing? Why are you stuck? Why does it feel habitual? Are you evolving? Are you laughing or crying to the banks? Always keep at the forefront of your business your why because in your why you will find your how to achieve what you want to accomplish in your why you will find your drive your motivation your mission your ambition your inspiration and yes your perspiration so hold on to your why remember businesses are about relationships between you and your customer you and your workers you and your money Keep it a healthy relationship. Thank you, Coach Bell. That was really energizing. We feel very alive and we feel very motivated. We're back here with Vivian of Vivi's Dance Studio. And it's been a very enlightening discussion. I've, I have personally learned a lot. And I'm hoping that Vivian has learned a lot too. I would let my panel of experts sum it up. A quick sum up quick lesson you want Vivian and our viewers to take home today? Yeah. Thank you, Charlotte. Vivian, I am so proud of you to start with. Let me tell you that you have a great product. The one thing is that you have proved in this COVID-19 era that there are no resilient companies, but resilient people. Yes. You have been resilient. You've fought through. You've kept your business alive. And we want to see you continue with that same passion to make your business a profitable one so that it makes sense for you and for everyone else. I think leadership in this time of uncertainty is key. And you have proved to be uh, someone who wants to do well. So I will tell you, leadership needs courage. Mm -hmm. And I know you know that already. Mm -hmm. Let that come out. Talk to yourself. Breathe in and breathe Exhale. out. <laughs> Courage. <laughs> Self-awareness. Okay, you are strong. You can do it. Focus as your vehicle is telling you. And of course, the last, never forget your humility. It must always be there as you speak to your clients, as you speak to your staff. This is time to rethink a new business model. And your independent advisors can help you with that. Your new business model must show smartness and it must be value driven. And you do have a value driven yes. idea. Let's put that into a business model. Let's effectively risk manage. Let's have strategies in place. Charlotte spoke about insurance and so forth. There are other mitigating factors too that you can discuss with independent directors. So I wish you well, and I know that you can do well. Small business owners, listen to some of these little tidbits. It's not the big wind, it's that soft, gentle wind. So just those little things can make a big change in your business. Thank you, Mona, excellent. Great. So, Sorry. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad you're largely driven by passion and you've turned your passion into business. And that's something you must, you must keep up with. But your business is growing faster. And if you don't manage it properly, you're going to get to a point where the passion will turn to stress. <laughs> because then issues are coming from all over. You are losing money and things like that. And then what you love is now stressing you. And that's a disadvantage. So seek help and seek help early and seek help from cheap sources and get friends even some of your students their parents may be experts in some areas yes talk to them some of them yes. will be ready to help to you help solve you. some yeah. of these these things right you got the there's one parent sitting here oh, okay. <laughs> because the, the the answer to every question is always in the question 
look at your resources within and to the business community. People that are around you, people you encounter with every day, seek that support from them and let them help you grow your businesses and you'll be able to pursue your passion and be happy at the, at the end of it. Don't let your passion turn to stress. Oh, I love my panel of experts. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, it's, I think it's a great time to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so much, there's so many resources out there. If we spent even our time on social media with a, a bit more um, intentionality and seriousness, you'll find that there's a lot of resources online to support small businesses. And I'll encourage you to do that. Um, today, we've looked at the risk you're carrying as a sole proprietorship, and I think it applies to a lot of small business owners. As much as you can, if it's possible, either you use insurance to mitigate those risks, or please consider moving into a limited liability vehicle. We will put out some information on the social media handles of Business Compass on how to do that. In the meantime, it's been fantastic working with Vivian today and we wish Vivi's Dance Factory the best of luck in the future. We're immensely proud of you. We know you're going to focus and to our entrepreneurs at home, our message today is focus. Focus on your numbers, focus on your structures and we look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week. things I'm picking from today's interaction uh, are one simple bookkeeping to keep my finances in check number two is considering moving from sole proprietary to limited liability and then my strengths and weaknesses were laid bare and so improving on my strengths and then tightening all the weak links mm -hmm.